Immersive technologies are blurring the boundaries between physical and virtual worlds, where virtual reality immerses the user's senses in a simulated world, augmented reality alters our perception of the physical world, often via a smartphone screen. The scope for the application of these technologies from sectors like education to architecture is vast and ever-expanding. So we've got with us the HTC Vive Focus Plus. This is a fully equipped um, VR headset with plenty of applications around training and development, around education, around gaming. Daniel, where have you transported me to? So we are in um, Vive Sync, a virtual environment for meetings, for presentations and demonstrations. I can bring a different element to the meeting room, uh, whether it's a PowerPoint presentations, a video, and even I can bring uh, 3D models. Uh, so we've seen in engineering, people are able to bring heavy machinery, expensive equipment, um, in a virtual environment where it's 100% um, safe, where you can um, de redesign everything in a much cost-effective way. Virtual reality consultant Steve Bradbury is at the forefront of applying VR to education here in Dubai. There was relevance and an opportunity to integrate virtual reality to, to enrich and, and redefine learning experiences, whether it is using applications like Google Tilt Brush to allow students to create impossible works of art, painting with fire, taking science students inside the human body to learn about uh, biology from the inside out, taking students back in time to learn about the past. So you can break down the walls of the classroom and take students to uh, anywhere in the world. It's spatial computing and it is a monumental shift from iPads and touchscreen tablets to VR and headsets and, and spatial computing and immersive technology. In the realm of architecture, immersive technology is reshaping the entire process from inception to construction. When we start using the VR, it gives us a really whole different level of uh, reviewing and validating our design. And in a sense that you can now look and feel and understand proportions, the scale and shape of your project design in a very efficient and, and more practical uh, way. You can use materials, you can shuffle and change between the materials, the design immediately almost. And you can feel it and you can uh, understand more about the right uh, lighting and light, uh, right texture, the white mode. This is very good for architects because they can also look into the pure design and shapes and geometries rather than the finishes and the materials of the project. And so if we look at the digital transformation of our built environment using things like VR to create buildings and BIM in 3D space, and that's the digital twin of the final product that's built, what do you do with that? So floor by floor, this, this is your digital asset. This is a real building that you could never lift apart and no. examine. In the digital environment, you can stack it and you can slice it in any way you want, and you can extract any information uh, about that particular floor place at any one time that's going on. This is all constant real time, and this is looking at the different types of cooling and heating. You can see here the smart integration of information of how we take data and supply it into the system is how these digital assets will also start to play a part in how we manage our cities, how we manage the, the energy needs, the water needs, the road needs, all the human needs that we take for granted every day. 